Oh man, I don't, I mean, there's so many places we can go with this. If you look at a map that is on some of the websites that are out there, it's cherry picked data. So do we have more CO2 than we had 10 years ago? Absolutely, hands down, no argument. Do we have more than we had 50 years ago? Yes, we do. Is it the most Earth has ever had? Absolutely not. We are on, even with that increase, we're on the low end of where the CO2 levels typically are on our planet. Mm -hmm. We go back, okay, so right now we're, I don't know the number, I think it's between 417 and 421 parts per million, depending on where you get the data. So right now we are averaging somewhere between 417, 420 parts per million. You go back in the ice cores in geologic time, and I, I just I'm got a couple of notes from the last video that I did. If we go back to the Jurassic period, everybody knows Jurassic because of the movie, Jurassic Park. We had over a thousand parts per million CO2. The average global temperature in Fahrenheit uh, daytime was about 80.6 degrees, and the average nighttime temperature is about 50, 59 degrees. Then you go to the Cretaceous. Now, this is really interesting. The Cretaceous period, the average carbon dioxide was 2,000 parts per million. Now, keep in mind, we're only 417, 421, and the temperature was still average 82 degrees in the day, 52 at night. Wow. You cannot say with 100% certainty that CO2, an increase in CO2 mm -hmm. caused an increase in temperature. And as a matter of fact, and we've got videos showing this very clearly, there are times when the CO2 levels have been high, the temperatures have been low. There are times when the CO2 levels have been, uh, have been uh, low and the temperatures have been high. There, mm -hmm. And there's another factor and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. gonna get to it, but the point I'm making is that what we're being told, Danica, is not true. Yeah. And I also I want to be really clear. This isn't about making somebody wrong. I don't want to make somebody wrong because a lot of the people out there are simply repeating because they're not scientists. Yeah. They're repeating our, our I mean, I like some of the news personalities that I hear. They're repeating lies sure. that someone else is. And even politicians, they're not scientists. Yeah. They get on a righteous soapbox and they repeat data. But the data is not supported by the evidence. And I'm going to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the greatest amount of CO2 that we've ever had. We're on the low end when you look at geologic history. We don't have uh, the, the Earth. The, during those times, Jurassic and Cretaceous, what did Earth look like? Earth was green, lush. Forests were green and lush. And we had much less ice on the planet because the, because it was warmer. It was a warmer climate. Yeah. Is it warmer than today? Yes. Is it the end of the world? No. Mm. Now, I did a little experiment uh, in January of 23 because I, I could see what was happening. And, and here in, uh, in the office, I took a few days and I said, OK, let's accept all of the numbers that we're being given as benchmarks by the UN, by the, the WEF. Let's accept those. Let's say we meet those marks. What does Earth look like? Mm. What what does my world look You're like? You're saying the projection of what they say. This, this is, is what they're, they're what they're they're mm. asking us to turn our world and our lives upside down, cause a lot of suffering, and in some cases death. Because when you cut out the energy sources in the middle of winter in northern Europe and have nothing to substitute that with, people are dying, and that happened. That, that has happened. Yeah. Uh, and even, even parts of America are having problems with that. So I said, what if, what if we met the CO2 goals that they want? So they, they're taking 2010 levels, and they want a 45% reduction from 2010. And so they're saying, stop drilling, stop. And, and so here's where this gets tricky. I'm not saying burn, burn, burn. I'm not saying that. We, I want to have that conversation as well. This is where it's, it's a very intricate conversation. Mm -hmm. Because if we truly, if we truly wanted a source of energy that produced zero greenhouse gases, could not be weaponized, could not melt down like a Fukushima reactor, is abundant and inexpensive, we've had that for over 70 years. And we'll talk about that as well. So let, let's just stay with the, the CO2 right now. 
if we met those CO2 goals, they want a 45% reduction from the 2010 levels, that would push us back Danica, to a global carbon dioxide level of right around 280-ish parts per million. This is a really low CO2 level. What scientists tell us, what biologists tell us, is if CO2 drops to about 185 parts per million, that it's, it's a death sentence for the forest. That is uh, uh, untenably low CO2 levels. And it's not like you can dial, you know, uh, uh, Parts per million, you know, a couple here, a couple there. 185 is dangerous. They want to push this back to 210. That is really close to that 185. <clears throat> okay. What does that mean? What does Earth look like if we do that? So I went to uh, a geologic map. And <clears throat> the last time our planet, and, and they want to reduce the average global temperature by about 11 degrees. From uh, right now, we're about 56 degrees uh, average global temperature. They want it back down to uh, 40, 45-ish degrees global average. That's that's a cool planet. So they want a cool planet and low CO2. The last time we saw this, Danica, was during a time in geologic history called the Pleistocene, the Pleistocene era. This was when about 30% of the Earth was covered with ice. The ice killed the forests. The CO2 levels were uh, were about 250 parts per million. That's scientific fact. Why would why in the world would we want to take this beautiful, lush, green planet yeah. back to a time when the temperatures are about 11 degrees cooler on average, CO2 levels lower, forests are dying, more ice on the planet. When we're not and, hot, we're in an ice age. Well, what, what you have to say, you have to say this, is it's not good for us. Yeah. It's, it's not good for humans. So who's it good for? That could be a whole conversation oh, unto yeah. itself as well. Wow. But what, Population what I, oh, control? Is this feed into a population control it, narrative it, or no? It may. I, I would have to speculate on that because I don't yeah. know for sure. Yeah. But it certainly is not good for us. Why? I mean, why? And they want to do this by the in six years. They're trying to, to meet these goals by the year 2030. So so what we're saying now, I just want to just covered a lot of ground. Yeah. CO2 is not a poison. Uh, it is necessary. And I think most of our viewers know that we exhale CO2. Mm -hmm. But in this beautiful symbiotic relationship with the plants, your house plants, your philodendron, and your roses and all the forests, they inhale the CO2 that we exhale. So when there is more CO2, and NASA has just come out and they said this, Earth is now greener and lusher than it has been in over 20 years hmm. because of the little, the little bit of the increase of CO2. We really haven't increased that much. And already Earth is, is greener and lusher than it has been. Hmm. So CO2, we're not the highest levels we've ever been. Uh, Earth is not the warmest it's ever been. Now, in, in all fairness, I want to be very honest about this. <clears throat> there was another time in geologic history, the Triassic period. CO2 levels were also about 2,000 parts per million. And the temperature was warmer. It was like Dubai all over the world. The average global temperature was uh, about 122 degrees. That's Phoenix temperatures in the summer. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's it's warm. It's warmer than we are now. It's not a death sentence to right. the planet. But but see, look at what's happening. Here's Triassic, 2,000 parts per million, 122 degrees. Here's Cretaceous, 2,000 parts per million, and it's only 82 80. degrees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, it's not the CO2 that, that's driving this. So, so, so now- Okay, so what is? Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. So I'm going to go back uh, to the, the NASA.gov statement. It's saying the 90% of the global warming is occurring in the oceans, causing the water's internal heat to increase. Mm -hmm. The oceans are warming from underneath. The glaciers are melting from underneath. If it was atmospheric warming, as we're being asked to, to accept, if okay. if it was because the air is warmer, you would expect those glaciers to, to melt from on top. The mm -hmm. oceans are huh. warming from underneath. Huh. As a geologist, this is fascinating to me. Right. The reason the oceans are warming from underneath is because of phenomenon that only happens about every 12 to 13,000 years. 
So we haven't seen it. Cycles, cycles. We haven't seen it in our lifetime. And if you don't think in terms of cycles, if you're looking at five years, 10 years, mm -hmm. 50 years, you're never going to see this. Mm -hmm. and, and then there's the political component where, where a phenomenon is being used as disingenuously as the leverage to force people into accepting change that benefits a few and hurts a lot of people. Does that make sense if I say it that way?